Despite his place as one of the most popular artists of the decade, there's something weird about Drake's career. If you look at his discography, a few noticeable oddities will stick out at you. Like most artists, he's got a few albums and an EP. He's also got a number of mixtapes, which is common enough in hip-hop, but one of them sticks out with commercial production and release. Then in 2017, Drake released More Life. While you could easily make an argument that More Life is Drake's fifth or even sixth studio album, he didn't brand it that way. Instead, Drake called it a playlist. So, why are Drake's albums labeled like they are? What's the difference between a mixtape, a playlist, and an album? Let's take a closer look. For a long time, an album's definition and constraints were simple. Albums were around 40 minutes of sound, enough to fit on one vinyl record. Occasionally, 80 minute double albums would take two. As technology evolved, the physical restraints of the album faded as CDs could fit more music. And nowadays studio albums will regularly be more than an hour long, sometimes with upwards of 20 tracks. But it's not the duration that defines an album for me, instead it's something more visceral, a sense of thematic cohesion. Often this is just because an album is recorded in the same time period, but other times it's because of a concerted effort. Drake's most recent studio album, Views, was a clear attempt to make something that could be called an album. That album was linked by one major theme, Drake's home city of Toronto. Check out this interview with Zane Lowe where Drake explains his impetus for Views. The, uh, the, the, the album is based around um, the change of the seasons in our city. That was basically what I used to tie it all together is uh, winter to summer and then back to winter again. So. Mm -hmm. It's just to show you, uh, show you the, the, the two extreme moods that we have, because we're very grateful for our summers, but we also make our winters work, and they're harsh. Yeah. You know? So if an album is connected thematically, what makes a mixtape? Like the album, the mixtape was originally born out of a physical medium, the audio cassette. In its earliest days, hip-hop was mostly a live art form, so people would take personal tape recorders and record these shows. They would then make copies and circulate these mixtapes. These formed many of the earliest hip-hop recordings, and soon DJs were making their own mixtapes at home. This independent, communal nature stayed integral to the medium as it grew. Because they were removed from big labels, mixtapes would often feature samples that hadn't been cleared and would sometimes be distributed free of cost. Nowadays, upstart artists often use mixtapes to get the word out on their music and build hype before they drop a studio album or sign with a major label. Drake himself did this early in his career, but if you're reading this it's too late, is different. It occupies a weird place in the mixtape culture. Leading up to it, Drake had often said that he was making a mixtape, but he released the songs on a major label and sold it for profit. This kind of blurred the lines between mixtape and album. There's some rumors that this was to meet contractual obligations which he was trying to get out of, but it's really hard to say. All of this brings us to Drake's most recent release at the time of this video, More Life. Just looking at the cover of More Life, you can see that Drake is pushing it not as an album nor as a mixtape, but rather as a playlist. As with the other media, a playlist is tied to technology, this time the MP3 and even more so music streaming services. However, you don't usually see an artist release original music as a playlist. Instead, it's a curated collection of existing songs, usually tied around a similar theme or idea. But I don't think that should always be the case. I think that the branding of More Life as a playlist is more than just a publicity stunt. It's a reflection of the direction that music is going. Listening to More Life, I think that a playlist is an accurate description of it. It's loaded with features and clearly other artists had a big impact on it, something that Drake isn't shy to admit. It's not really Drake putting together one piece so much as it is him curating different sounds and features to show off what he and his friends are capable of. Casting the album as a playlist also helps explain its length. Some people criticized Views for being too long and self-indulgent and called it an album that could have had some fat trimmed. When you make a playlist, however, it doesn't need to be looked at or even experienced as a whole. Playlists in their nature are more casual listening than albums, at least in my view. That casual listening also allows for experimentation. Drake was able to give different samplings of tracks that might not work together as an album. The smooth R&B of Passion Fruit seems in stark contrast with the intensity of KMT. 
If an album is a novel, a cohesive piece of work with its own highs and lows, I think this playlist can be seen as a short story collection, bits of artistic expression tied loosely together. The presentation of More Life reflects the nature of the playlist as well. Most albums have packaging that's meant to augment the listener's experience, often coming with photo books or alternate covers. For More Life, it's just a simple photo of Drake's dad and the playlist title. By calling More Life a playlist, Drake is directing the listener as to how they should hear it. It's not an album and it shouldn't be taken as such, but it's not a mixtape either. It's a casual release, an opportunity for Drake to show off some styles and artists he likes and to give his fans some ear candy as he works on polishing his next release. And I think that in naming More Life a playlist, Drake is helping to open new ground and push forward a new medium for artists to explore in years to come. What up squad, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can hit the subscribe button. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram by clicking the links below. Until next time, thanks for watching all Dev News.